Hello everybody, I'm so happy to see you in my tutorial. So as you know, data science or data related field is getting very popular. Python and Python libraries are also getting very popular, specifically starting from NumPy up to scikit-learn, TensorFlow, etc. In this video, I dedicated my time on teaching you NumPy. So let's get started with first of all answering to some questions that may appear on you. So first question is what is NumPy? NumPy is a Python library used for working with arrays. So Python library is kind of a separate thing that is built on Python. So if you import NumPy or other libraries into Python itself, okay? And NumPy was created in 2005 by Travis Elephant. It is open source project and you can use it freely, okay? So it is free, you can use it. NumPy stands for numeric Python. So it is numeric Python. NumPy is written in C or C++. In some sources, it is written in C. In others, uh, it is written in C++. The latest version of NumPy is 1.19.4. So the next question is why learn NumPy? Personally, I think there should be reason before learning something or doing something, yes? If you don't have any reason of doing learning something, then it's just a make cool with memorizing and at the end you'll just forget it again. So there should be definitely reason. And here are some reasons that I'm gonna be giving you maybe it can be a reason that you should learn NumPy. First reason is that NumPy is the foundation or the basis of almost all of the other Python libraries. For example, if we take Pandas, Pandas is built on top of NumPy, which means NumPy shares many of its functions with Pandas. So Pandas uses many of NumPy's functions. If you learn NumPy, then it would be easier to learn Pandas or other libraries because many of them have got similar functions as NumPy has got, okay? So NumPy is the basis of most of the Python libraries. This is the reason. And there are several cool features of NumPy that distinguishes or makes it unique over other libraries of the Python stuff. So it is high performance. It is faster than most of the Python libraries. And it is integrated or similar code C or C++. And the third reason is it has got multi-dimensional container function. So you can build n-dimensional array or list, in other words, if you put it into simple words. So the fourth reason is broadcasting function. So what kind of function that is, is that broadcasting is kind of arithmetic operations which can be performed in n-dimensional or multi-dimensional containers. And the fifth reason is work with variety databases. So there are several types of arrays and all of them are supported by NumPy. So the lastly sixth feature of NumPy is that it has got cool functions related to linear algebra. You can work with matrix, okay? So, and, the, and lastly, the reason why you need to learn is that as Python is getting popular in the area of data science or data related job, Python libraries are also getting very popular, yes? If you want to learn Python to use in data science or data related jobs, then you definitely need to start with NumPy. So if you start with NumPy, then it would be easier to learn some of the other libraries, for example, Pandas or SciPy. Matplotlib, scikit-learn, seaborn, and etc. So last question that you may ask me is where is the NumPy official page? Interestingly, most of the Python's top libraries has got their own web pages. Uh, here is web page. If we go, it opens this web page. You can go to documentation specifically, installation, and etc. And there are some other information. So here are case studies and etc. That's it. And the next tutorial, we're going to be installing NumPy and doing other functions, as I showed, linear algebra and etc. So see you on the next tutorial. Hi there, how is it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing how to install NumPy in different IDEs. So first of all, 
as I am using Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to be giving you some advices and the techniques to install NumPy. Jupyter Notebook is one of the basics or one of the fundamental tools to use in data science. If your aim is to become a data science, then you definitely need to know Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to be giving you the link below so that you can watch what is Jupyter Notebook and get some skills using Jupyter Notebook. Okay? So let's get started with uh, installing NumPy on Jupyter Notebook. First of all, NumPy is pre-installed on Anaconda or Jupyter Notebook if you install it. Okay, So there is no need currently if you want to use NumPy to install it. Okay, So you can just use it is already installed however if you come across to any problem for example if you import numpy there is a problem then i can show you how you can install so first of all we're going to be going to anaconda anaconda prompt or powershell it's going to be giving us this interface and uh, whenever you want to install anything you need to just type on the install then the name of that library so for example we want to NumPy. Okay, so you just press enter, that's it. From the install NumPy. I didn't press enter because in my Jupyter or notebook it already exists, so you can do it. However, I don't do it now. And now there is another IDE which is one of popular among Pythonists or Pythonistas. So it is PyCharm, and I'm going to be showing you how to install NumPy on PyCharm. So let's get started with pressing file in the top left corner and then you need to go to settings in settings there is project and in project there is project interpreter and in this page there are all of the libraries that you will be installing okay here is libraries that i have already installed and there are lots of them here one of them is numpy so now I'm going to be installing NumPy. How do we install is just by pressing plus sign here. So if you enter plus sign, there are lots of libraries here. You just need to type here NumPy. You need to have internet connection. And here is the information about the NumPy. So it's going to be downloading NumPy and installing it on your PyCharm. Okay. So then you can import and use it. So here is install package. If I install it, it's going to be showing installing and here is the loading sign so it's going to be installing within some minutes okay if you come across to problem it is a typical thing here is it package numpy install successfully so if you come across to any problem for example here red color is going to be appearing if it is unsuccessful installation then you need to search for why you are not being able to install numpy on your pycharm or Jupyter Notebook, okay? Because this is a typical, if you enter to coding, then there are lots of problems. You need to be able to solve your problems through searching, through asking. You come across to lots of problems, you need to ask Google properly. Especially Stack Overflow has got lots of lots of questions that has been solved, okay? So you just ask Google and it's gonna be giving you answer. There is definitely one answer, but you need to be able to ask proper question so that's it and we have installed it and i'm going to be showing you now there is numpy here is it there is 1.19.4 this is the latest version and here is the latest version so that's it for this installation part and uh, see you on the next tutorials on how to import numpy and use some other functions uh, and thank you so much for watching my tutorial hi there how is it going Welcome to my NumPy course. In this video, I'm going to be giving you the broad overview of what you're going to be learning in this course. So first of all, we're going to be learning arithmetic operations, statistical operations, bitwise operators, uh, mathematical operations, uh, sort, searching and counting, broadcasting, linear algebra, matrix operations, statistics, copying and viewing arrays. So these are the main sections that you need to be familiar with if you want to know numpy so i'm going to be giving you all the information with details uh, according to these sections and at the same time if there is something missing here i also go into details of it and i also 
use some quizzes so that you can get exercises and the real life applications. And that's it for this video. See you on the next tutorial. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to import NumPy and use it. So first of all, we're going to be using Jupyter Notebook. If you are using PyCharm or any other IDE, I also consider uh, using the functions. First of all, we need to import NumPy before using it. First of all, we use import function, then the name of the library. So we're going to be importing NumPy, shift enter. If you press shift enter, it's going to be running. Here it is, first one. And then we can create, for example, array is equal to numpy dot array one two three four we can also print it for example print array you see one two three four it's a list in python and the other better way of importing numpy is using shortcut for example if you use numpy you always need to import and use this numpy uncomfortable word so another the most popular way of importing libraries in general is just using shortcut. For example, import numpy as np. Now instead of numpy long word, we're gonna be using shortcut mp. Most of the people use this mp as a shortcut for numpy. So again, array is equal to np dot array. You see. We are using shortcut ways. Always try to learn the shortcut ways, the quickest ways. So shift enter, then print again array. So that's it. And there is, for example, another way. You can also import specific function of NumPy. For example, here we only imported NumPy library, but there are lots of functions like array, log, mean, maximum, and arrange, line space, and etc. functions in NumPy library. So we can just use np or numpy dot that function. However, we can also import specific function. Like for example, if we want to only use numpy's array function, we can also use it. The advantage of importing just this function is that it takes less memory. So for example, from numpy import, for example, array, shift enter. And now we can skip this np dot or numpy dot array. So we can just use, for example, array is equal to array one, two, three, four. We're gonna be just calling the same thing. However, we cannot use other functions. For example, we only imported NumPy's array function. We cannot use NumPy's other functions. For example, here we can just use np.array or arrange and the other functions, okay? Here is, for example, we have imported already this one, yes? So we can use arrange, np.arrange, five, for example. And if we print, arrange then again you see we can also use other functions but here we cannot use we can only use this one because we have imported only this array function of numpy so the other function for example if we import numpy as np np dot random random has got its another various functions for example again dot rand int so two ten is it five so it's giving us integers between two and uh, ten the, it is random we can also use the uh, inner inner function in numpy for example numpy's function is random random's inner function is uh, rented or rand or shuffle etc each dot means that there is inner function okay so numpy has got inner function which is random it is one of the functions of numpy and there is a rendint it is one of the functions that random has got. So we can also import specific that function, for example, random, like array. Here is array. We didn't use dot function. Yes, we just specifically imported this one. Now we can also import inner inner function. So for example, from numpy dot random import, for example, random. So 
shift enter and now we can just use rendent as we did before in area again same thing see it's still working it still works and in this video as i said i'm going to be showing you the different types of importing this kind of libraries functions lastly we're going to be now printing the latest version of numpy so mp underscore double underscore version again double underscore it is this is the latest version that i'm using currently in my tutorial so now i'm going to be proving you how quick this numpy array is than python typical list for example just simple np dot random dot randint zero for example hundred two thousand or two million we made it and now we're gonna be using Jupyter Notebook special decorator which is time it and it is gonna be giving us the time it takes to perform specific tasks for example if we use dot mp dot power power function we just give the sample here's the sample and then we're going to be giving other input too so if we just shift enter it's going to give us time it takes i think this function time it does not work in most of the ides unfortunately because it is only the function specifically for jupyter node so another thing for example if i copy it and now we're going to be comparing it with the, just the python's typical list so it's gonna give me again same mostly but the time it takes is longer uh, loading still as you see asterisk and now it gives us you see 1.8 seconds so it was 58.9 milliseconds with the error of 553 microseconds but here it is 1.8 seconds this is the error and uh, you see there is a difference because this one is being executed quicker so numpy indeed is quicker than typical python functions like list dictionaries and etc so because of this you also need to use numpy if you want to uh, improve the memory efficiency so that's it in this tutorial we learn different types of importing numpy or in general python library the recommendation i would give you is importing numpy as np NP is the common shortcut name for importing and using NumPy. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorials. Hi there, how is it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about dimension, shape, and size of an array. So first of all, let's get started with importing NumPy. So then I'm going to be creating array. For example, one, five. So if you want to know the type of this array, we can also do as following type array, you see, numpy array. Or the shortcut specifically for Jupyter Notebook, if you are using Jupyter Notebook, you can also use this type without print function. And if you want to know more about this Jupyter Notebook, you can go to the link below to know more in depth, okay? Then we have dimension. So first of all, we want to know the dimension. So let's get started with a is equal to np.array. And uh, let's say just a number. And now if I want to know the dimension of it, there is a numpy function knowing it and dot n dimension and time okay so it is zero dimensional and now i'm going to be increasing it so let's copy it to make it quicker i'm going to be changing the dimension of it so this is four it is one dimension because my method of identifying the dimension is just looking at this square brackets okay so if there is zero then there is zero dimension and if there is one it is one dimensional if there is two then it is uh, two dimensional so let's increase again so i'm going to be making it two one two three then four five six so if i make it there is two dimensional and as obviously here is two again increase it three dimensional one two three one two three then we have 
six. And now we're gonna be opening again. Seven, eight, nine. Then open zero. So it is three dimensional because we have three brackets here. You see, this is how I personally identify. It depends upon you totally. It sometimes may work, may don't, because I haven't proven it. Okay, like a mathematical theory, but this is how I identify it. So another cool method is you can also create a NumPy array by specifying the dimension of it. So let's get started by giving, seeing and looking at it. So array is, for example, just say two, three, four, or maybe five. And now dimension menu, let's say five. If I want to know the array itself, how it looks like, I can print it. And the print want to know the dimension. It is five dimensional. This one is printing the dimension of it as above. And this one is printing the array itself. So how it looks like. Here is obviously one, two, three, four, five square brackets. So you can also identify through it. This one is cool parameter that NumPy's array function has got. Now we're gonna be moving into shapes. So I'm gonna be making it, specifying it. And again, if you want to know more about this kind of cool tricks that Jupyter Notebook has got, you can go to the link below. So now I'm gonna be again opening new array. Oh, sorry, mp dot array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have this one. Again, I want to know the dimension. C dot n dime. And if I want to know the shape of it, there is function, another function similar to n dimension. Print C dot shape. So if you want to know the shape of it, you can use this one. As I know, this is column and this is row. So there are two columns, this one, this one. This is the first column, this is the second column. And uh, there are rows, first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. So there are four rows. Now, if I want to change the shape of it, so I can uh, change the shape. A is equal to array, maybe up to six. Okay, one, two, three, four, then four, five, six. Again, I forgot the outer. And now I can dot shape. So if I want to change the shape of it, then I can specify it. And now if I call it print A, you see, it has changed it. There are three columns, the first column, second column, third column. There are two elements in it, two rows in it. So the first row here, instead, you can just use this one as a column and a row. Anyway, I think you got the point. And now we're going to be going into much more deeper. Similar to shape, you can also use another NumPy function, which is called reshape. For example, if I want to change again the NP, I'm going to be creating array. So in array, maybe I can do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 0, 10, and then 12. So now, if I want to change the shape of this array, I can just reshape the original shape and assign it to another variable. So a dot reshape, maybe two, three. Be careful when reshaping it because it may not correlate with the shape of original array. So if it doesn't correlate, then it may give you error. So I'm gonna be calling it b. There are two dimensions here, and there are three columns in each of this dimension. And then there are two elements or two rows in each of this dimension. And there is another trick if you want to make multi dimensional array into one dimensional array, you can also use this reshape function by putting just negative one. And then I assign this one array if i print this array then you see 
it's giving us one dimensional array of this several dimensions that's it for shapes and now i'm going to be moving to size size array again i'm going to be creating new array so one two three four and maybe five two again if we want to know the data type of these elements we can also do as following data type you see integer 32 and now interestingly we can also use item size dot item size you see it is four so it is four bytes now interestingly we can also just copy it specify the data type of these elements of this array so let's do it data type is equal to in string integer it was 32 and now i want to make it 16. so if i want to know the array d type so it's going to be giving me 16 and at the same time if i want to know the item size then it's going to give me two so each element size is two bytes so if we want to know the size of all the elements then we need to multiply size of the item how many elements here and the item size let's get started with otherwise that one print array dot size and this is the total elements of for example five elements here and then array dot item size so if we give it's 10 because each element is two bytes and two times five it is 10 great awesome and there is another shortcut if you want to specify the data type you can also use the short way for example one or two for 16. again it's not changing but if i want to int eight then one you see it's eight now or if you want to float then float f2 so you see float 16 and there are different shortcut ways that you can learn by searching then we have complex numbers for example i can also specify here complex number i don't create just copy it in order to make it quicker i can make complex okay if i make it complex and print it you see it is complex numbers real and imaginary if you don't specify here the imaginary part it just gives you zero as an imaginary part we have also another way of specifying the data type now i'm going to be showing you it here so for example if i say numpy array 1.1 2.2 3.3 and etc i can specify it by making new array cv is equal to array dot s type s type i i or anything as i showed you integer i'm going to be making it and printing it print cv you see it is one two three it deleted this part it was float type and now it made integer type i so that's it for today and thank you for watching as a revision we learned size dimension and the shape of an array so in the next tutorials we're going to be going through other new topics and see you on the next tutorials hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about indexing and slicing as you know indexing and slicing plays important role in data manipulation data extraction so if you know indexing and slicing, you can do well in these sections. Here is function which takes three parameters specifically, start, stop, and step. And we're going to be going into details of this one in this tutorial. So first of all, let's get started with importing NumPy. So import NumPy as NP. We have imported, and I'm going to be making simple NumPy array. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so then, if I want to take this two in the second index, printing array position, which is one. So you see, I took this element. The indexing starts from zero, one, two, three, four. 
So I took the element in the first index. So if you want to know more about the indexing slicing, which is taught in depth in my Python introduction course, you can go to the link below as I showed. Let's continue with more complicated arrays. I'm going to be making it complicated, increasing the dimension 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I can take again the same element by using the same function. So array, the name of it, how do I do? The first dimension, this is the first dimension. Before selecting this element inside this array, so you need to select which dimension you're going to be getting, this one or this one. So I'm going to be taking again the dimension which is in zero's position. So here, this one. So I'm going to be taking it and comma. Then which element from inside this I'm going to be taking. Of course, the element which is located in the first index I'm going to be taking. Again, two. But this is in two dimensional. As you go to many dimensions, you need to put commas. For example, again, if it is three dimensional, then you again put zero if it is located here in the first dimension. I'm going to be giving another example of it. So let's take it, copy, paste it. Let's take, I'm not going to be using print function like this above in order to make it visually better so that you can understand better. If you are using other IDEs like PyCharm and etc. Then you need to use print one and fourth. Why? So what does this give? Guess what? Pause it and guess what? So the I'm gonna be now explaining. It's gonna be taking the first one. This one is zero's position. This one is the second position. So it's gonna be taking this one and then it's gonna be entering inside the elements. Then it's gonna be taking the fourth element, which is zero first, second, third course so the last element so it's gonna be giving us zero see and now we can move to three dimensional arrays let's get started with building it np dot array so three dimensional which is interesting isn't it because as it gets complicated we also need to make our indexing complex now seven eight nine ten zero so this is my three-dimensional array as again it has got three square brackets in my method so now i'm going to be slicing it i'm going to be taking the first array okay the first one is zero as always and then after entering we have two options there are two arrays again so which one i'm going to be taking i'm going to be taking first element which is here because this is a zeros element this is the first element then from the first element, which one I want to take? Again, the last one I want to take. Zeros, first, and second. Here it is second, and you see? Amazing, isn't it? You need to understand the indexing, the position of these arrays in order to make your indexing complex. As the dimension gets very complicated, you also get confused. But anyway, take this one. Uh, leave the first square bracket then take this one which leads up to here and now second one come here then come here you see it takes three indexes so now let's move to other example what is it so again take this simpler one we can also use indexing in a negative way too so for example array first elements and negative one what do you think? What does it give? Pause it and think about it. So the first element, this is zero's element. This is the first array. So I'm going to be taking first one because this is showing first one. And then as I choose this one, I need to enter into its elements. So negative one shows that it needs to start from here, from the right side. So negative one is here, negative two, negative three. Interestingly, if you start from here, from left side, it starts from zero. But if you start from right side, then it starts from negative one. So negative one is here. So it should give us zero. You see, again, it give us zero, but in different way. So there are lots of functions, lots of cool tricks that you may master. 
So now we're going to be moving to slicing. So let's get creative. So I'm going to be copying it, copy it, pass it. And now slicing is a little bit different. What is the difference is that it's going to be getting some part of it. For example, from 7 to 9, unlike indexing, which just gets 7. So it gets some part of it. Okay, again, it works the same. However, there is columns. So up to 5. Oh, sorry, up to 3. Let's see. 2, 3. What it is getting is that it is starting from first element, zeros, first element, which is 2. And it is first, second, and the third. However, it's giving us only this one. What does it mean is that the starting point is included. If you put one, for example, here, it is starting from indeed first element, which is giving us second, yes. But it is not giving us first, which is in the third index. Why? Because it is excluded. The stopping point here is excluded. So whenever you slice, take care of this excluded stopping point too. So it doesn't give us this one which is in the third index. So it is giving us first and second, excluding third position. So I think you got my point. And now I'm gonna be moving to another position. Let's get creative and go into details. So I'm gonna be again slicing it, let's say first. What is it? What does this give us? So it's giving us five, six, seven. So it's giving us this part. What does it mean? Zero, first, second, third, and starting from fourth, it's giving us all of it. So we didn't put here like about any number specifying the stopping point. If we don't specify the stopping point, then it is gonna be giving us all the elements starting from left fourth element. It started from the fourth index and it gave us all the elements in an array. Copy it again. Now move to two-dimensional array and slicing array so force okay so what does this give us now whenever you see columns you need to imagine it all not only this one not only this part okay so you need to consider all of it so from all of it i'm going to be reading uh, converting it to our language english language okay so like a mass word problem choose all of it from that all of it, take fourth elements, zeros, first, second, third, and fourth. So it's going to be taking fourth element from each of them. You see, it's giving us five and the zero. So it is entering to both of these arrays and then taking fourth elements. Now we can also again take another example, another two strengthen our knowledge in as i said indexing so what do you think again what does this give us again imagine and now we need to choose one of these elements is it all no it is not all because here is the first parameter and it is showing us we need to take zeros element so if we take zeros element then it should be this one and in that zeros array what should we take? Which element should we take? It's showing us column. So if it is column, then we need to take all. Again, remember all. Whenever you see this one alone, it is all. Again, you see one, two, three, four, five. Awesome, isn't it? So if you master it, it is cool trick. And now I'm gonna be again moving to much more complicated way of functions. So again, it is two-dimensional. Now another trick zeros then first six then two so what it is giving us so it is choosing the zeros array it is taking this array then it is taking okay let's increase this one eight so it is taking the first array starting from the first element of this array first element is here it is starting from first element and it is stopping in the sixth element but sixth element is excluded so it is going to be taking this part it is going to be stepping by two 
So it is going to be increasing the number of elements by two. So it is going to be taking this and this. Here is the step. If you don't specify the step, the third element here, it is going to be one as default. So if you take it, see, it's giving us. Oh, sorry, it should take this six too because we started from zero and it is up to here, but seven is exclude. So from this part, we are taking every second element starting from first element. How interesting it is. So if you understand it, master it, it is cool trick, okay? So now I'm gonna be again taking this array. Now I can also assign value into specific element. So for example, if I make it 2000, then I have specified. And now if I call this array, you need to use print here if you are using other than Jupyter Notebook or Colaf. You see, it is 2000. So it is taking the first array and the second element. Here is three. Instead of three here, it is putting this value. Here is another example. We can go deeper into it. If I again extract zero, one, two, four, then again, I can do 3,000 or 3 million. It doesn't matter. So if I call again, see, it is making 3,000 or 30,000. Yeah. So what it is doing, it is taking the zeros array again. And then it is starting from the first element up to fourth. Okay, one, two, three, four. But this one is excluded. So there are three elements which are made 30,000. I'm going to be going into details again. I can also specify array. For example, in both of them, in all of the arrays inside the big array, I can make the second elements of these two arrays, 4,000 and 5,000. So if I call it, then you see it is taking the both arrays and then making the second element 4,000 and 5,000. So again, we're going to be going deeper into it. I can also take several dimensionals. Is there any several dimensional array that we made? I think here it is. Copy it. Three dimensional array. Here it is. Array zero, ones, and the second. What it is going to be taking? It is taking the first array. And inside it, again, there are two arrays. Which one? This one, zeros one, or first one? So I'm going to be taking the first one as it is showing. First one. And then in this first array, I'm going to be taking the second element. So it is this one. Yes. See? Six. Three dimensional. This one. Okay. I can also go deeper into this one. So array. All of them. Then first one. Then all of them. What it is saying is that I'm going to be taking all of both of these arrays and inside it i'm going to be taking first arrays from each of them then i'm going to be taking all of the elements of these first elements this and this it's going to be giving us you see fourth fifth six and zero eleven and twelve awesome isn't it <laughs> and now i can also specify change the elements of it so I'm going to be taking this one again, copy. The previous, these elements, I'm going to be changing them. So I took this one, and now I can assign a value. 999888. Shift, enter, and now if I call it, you see, it is giving us nines and eights instead of this one and this one. And now I can also make another array, np.array123, oh, sorry, six, maybe seven. So I'm going to be taking, as long as this one is one array, I don't specify which array to take because this one is only the array, as you know. So now I'm going to be entering to the elements and which one I'm going to be taking. I'm going to be taking up to force element, but excluding forces element. So if I take 
So this is how it is giving us zeros, first, second, third element. And now I'm going to be using this one in negative parameters. So how it looks like negative three up to negative one. You see fifth and sixth. <laughs> That's cool. So we can also again use steps too. For example, array one fives two. See steps. We are starting from first element, which is two, up to fifth element, which should be six, but we excluded it, so it is fifth. So now we are jumping from here uh, up to here, second and fourth, taking every second element. There is another cool trick. Using it, second. So what do you think? What it is doing? It is not specifying the starting and the stopping point, but it is specifying the stepping point, every second element. So what it is going to be giving? It's giving us odd elements. Why? It is taking the zeros element and third element, fifth element, every second element in an array. See how cool it is. We can also get to another cool example with two dimensions. Let's get this one. So I'm going to be putting it. I can print first and one and fourth element. So what it is going to be doing? Seven, eight, nine. What it is taking? Again, specify the base, the first array. And then inside it, we're going to be specifying which elements we're going to be getting. Starting point is from sevens up to fourth. The first element should be here, but fourth element is stopping point and it is going to be giving us excluding. We can also make another example. Let's look at it. Array 0, 2, then 2. So what do you think? What it is going to be giving us? 3 and 8. So it took from 0 up to second element. So if we have more than two or three elements, then it's going to be taking up to three arrays. Then inside them, it's going to be giving us second element, which should be third and eighth. So if we have more arrays, it's going to be taking up to second element, excluding second. But if we have here three arrays, it should give us only this array's elements. So I think you got the point. I didn't show you, but you should get the point. You should check it out. Another trick I'm going to be showing now is as follows. So maybe zeros. See, it's giving us this one. What it is giving us is that starting from the zeros array up to first array. But first array is excluded. This one is excluded. This one is included. So it is taking and giving us from the first element up to fourth element, but fourth element is excluded, so it is giving us these three elements. If I make here this one two, then it's going to be excluding the second element, but including the first element. This one is first, and this one is zeros. So you see, it's giving us these elements from the first up to fourth element from both areas. Interesting, isn't it? So now, as we are getting too complicated, I'm going to be challenging you by giving another complicated array. Let's use that dimensional array. So which one was this? This one, yes. Let's get So this one, array, and uh, y is equal to x4 first and the second. Oh, sorry, x is not, ah, uh, yeah. So is array. Oh, index is not out of bound. So I think I should erase this one. Okay, then if I make it y, then you see 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12, and 11, okay? It is cool, yes? It is giving us that much complicated array extraction.
So now I'm going to be also giving you, for example, if we have array is equal to array greater than five, it's going to be giving us only the arrays or only the elements greater than five. So as we are getting complicated, I think I also can make another complicated array, but you need to practice all of them. NP dot none. So there is none placeholder. It doesn't have value, but it just holds a place. None three four oh four five. Okay, then I can print only the tilde np dot is none. There is that kind of function. You see, is none. So it is going to be only giving us the values which is not none not placeholder okay again i can take this one copy it put it instead of placeholder nuns i'm gonna be putting complex numbers as you may know j this is complex numbers that you can make in python so let's make five plus five j and now there is again similar function which says np dot is complex complex a you see it's giving us complex numbers it is cool to learn all of this data extraction functions again we learned indexing and slicing in this tutorial i hope you enjoyed the tutorial see you in the next tutorials bye bye hi there how is it going in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about iterations on NumPy arrays. So first of all, let's get started with importing NumPy. Simply. So then I'm going to be creating a simple NumPy array. One, two, three. Then iterating through it. Weeks in array, then print x so you see this for loop is taking each element of array and then printing it it is that much simple however if you don't understand for loop then you definitely need to go to the link below i specified in which i taught for loop or the basics of python so now i'm going to be moving into more complicated arrays and iterating over it so two dimensional array four, five, x. Okay, for x in array, then print x. So it's not giving us this kind of elements one, two, three. It's giving us two arrays. You know how it is doing so? It is taking each array from this big array and it's printing it. But we can also enter to it through making two for loops. For example, for x in array, again for y in x, then print it, printing y's. So it is now giving us similar to elements above. However, we are making two for loops. Why? So first of all, we are entering to these two arrays. Then in these arrays here, in these two x's, we are entering inside the elements which are one two three four five six so i think you got my point now i'm going to be moving into much more complicated arrays for example if i take this one again copy copy past then i'm going to be copying it or x okay so Seven, eight, nine, zero, twelve. Now, if I put for x in R, for y in x, print y's. Again, it's giving us four arrays because this one is three dimensional arrays. So we need to put again four. As the dimension of these arrays are increasing, we need to put more for loops in order to enter to the inside of these arrays. So for 
set in Y. So now I can put set indentation. You see, now it is giving us up to 12. So as the dimension is increasing, the for loops also need to increase. And it is challenging because this is just a three dimensional. What would happen if we have a 10 or 20 dimensional array? We need to do that much for loops and it is very challenging and takes time. So always we need to use the shortcut ways. So how do we do? There is NumPy function that takes care of this kind of problems. Again, let's take this one. Okay, for x in NumPy dot and the iter. Give the name of that array. Then just print x. You see, it's again giving us that elements. That's it. However, we are using here several for loops, but here with just one for loop, we are checking the elements. You see how cool it is. Yeah. Then we also can do other tricks. For example, just tick all of it. Now I can also use indexing, slicing in order to sort it and print the sum of it. So what it is doing is that here it is taking all of these arrays, this one and this one. And in that arrays, it is taking this one and this one. If you had three elements, it would have taken third element to third array two. Okay? However, we don't have it now. But anyway, we can also go to other ones. For example, we can also use two dimensional array. Where is it? Copy it, pass it, and now I can also for it x and x in numpy dot ng enumerator merits then array name so print id x and x so you see it's giving us id as there are two arrays here the first zeros here takes care of the first array these ones are going to be taking care of this one so these are the element indexes the second row okay so these are the elements how cool it is so that's it for array iterations and if you want to iterate over array you definitely need to apply this in the editor and then in the enumerator so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and see you on the next tutorial hi there how is it going in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about different types of arrays that you can create using NumPy. So first of all, again, we're going to be importing NumPy as NT. Then I'm going to be creating NumPy array one dot array four. Then again, seven eight. So now. If I print it, this is a typical array as we have been learning since the beginning of NumPy course. So I'm going to be creating another type of array. So array to np dot arrange. So just five. If I print it, it's going to be printing from zero up to four. And I think we can also get deeper into it. So array np dot arrange. So ten up to 20 then step is 2 data type is floating point print array 2 you see 10 12 14 16 18 these are all floating numbers with dots you see so this is the starting point stopping point and step and data type as previously so now i'm going to be moving to another type which is a line space and it is commonly used in coordinates matplotlib so array 3 is equal to np dot line or lin i don't know line space i do just call it line space 20 then 5 and the print array 3 so you see it is 10 12.5 15 
and 20. You see, it is giving us numbers uh, with uh, specific ranges. You see, it is adding 2.5. So then what can we do with line space again? So again, we need to just copy it, copy, paste, and uh, 5, 10, maybe we can end point. We cannot add in point false. So you see, you cannot include this decimal. It's just a whole number, like an integer. Okay. So then we have the copy log space. You see, log space point zero, then two point zero. Oh, sorry, two point zero, and the number is ten. There are ten elements here. It is printing different ranges of numbers. So it is related to mathematics, so I don't want to explain it as I'm not teaching you mathematics. And you can also go deeper into other working system. And mainly these are the three types of arrays. This, the first one is array. The second one is a range. So you can print array in range from 10 to 20 or from 100 to 1000 and etc. And also you can specify the data type. Then we have a link space, which gives, oh sorry, which gives you the range of specific numbers, okay? And the locked also gives you according to logarithms. Hi there, how is it going? In this tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about special types of arrays. So first of all, I'm gonna be importing again the same import numpy as np. So then np dot zeros so zeros five you see it's giving us the array filled with zeros you see there is function which is called zeros and there are several parameters it has got and now i'm gonna be going into details of its parameters so first let's get started with brackets then three maybe four you see, all of these arrays are filled with uh, zeros. These are two arrays, and in each of them, there are three, again, arrays. And each of these inner, inner arrays, there are four elements. Okay, so again, there is another special type of array, which is ones. You see, all of them consist of ones, you see. And again, we can increase similar to this one in p dot ones by the way again i am just printing it without print function if you are using pycharm then you definitely need to use print okay so now i'm gonna be again applying several parameters for example two two you see it's giving us that much arrays so then we have another function which doesn't only fill this array only with uh, ones or zeros it only fills with any number that you want for example with twos threes and etc and the function that you can use for this one is maybe 299 maybe yes and the data type you can also specify in all of these special array types int 32 yeah you see it is giving us int 32 or maybe for example you can also increase it in any dimension okay so which is cool isn't it i'm gonna be making our typical array so one two three then four five six okay so now if you don't want to specify the dimension here you can also use another function which takes the shape of other arrays like this for example here numpy dot full and like full like array then four so you see it's gonna be taking the shape of this array and filling it with force or for example you can also use just this full take a look at this np dot full and take the shape of this array then fill it with force you see it's again the same thing only the function is somehow different okay then we have another function, which is identity function, identity, identity function, and it is five. You see, 
its identity function. It is related to linear algebra. However, I don't want to teach you here linear algebra. And uh, this is how you can apply these kind of identity functions uh, into linear algebra related problems. Okay. So, and then we have np.i. So you see, again, almost the same. However, you need to use another function, which is different. And then you can also take, for example, here, this one. So then repeating. So we're going to be repeating it. Okay. Dot repeat. Error, then three. Then axis is equal to zero. So we're going to be printing R. Let's print it. You see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It is repeating this array three times. Okay. So it's going to be repeating the element of the array n times. Here is the three. Okay. So if you want to make it one, you see, it's going to be repeating the elements of it inside, which is awesome, isn't it? And there is also another special type of array. And you can do it through making it as following. We have data type. Maybe, yeah, you can specify it if you want. But if you don't want, you cannot. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it's going to give us the dimension. And the, the empty is going to be printing from 1 up to 6 or n integer, okay, depending on the shape of it. For example, we can also use none as previously I have shown you. And p dot array. And uh, we can uh, specify the empty space by specifying none function. So if we put, you see, none, there is none. This doesn't take space, however, it takes the place which is placeholder, as most of the programmers say. And there is all function, true, false, whatever I forgot here. Okay. okay, it is giving us false. The reason it is giving us false is that if there is any false here, then it's going to give us false, because there shouldn't be any false or zeros in order that all function give us true. Okay. Otherwise, if there is at least or there is minimum one or any, any number of false or negatives, then it's going to give us false. Okay. So, and there is another function, which is any. If there is at least one true, then it's going to give us true. Okay. There should be at least one true, which is somehow opposite of all, but they have different functions. If I remove all trues and put falses, then it's going to give us uh, false because there is no any true here. But here, if there is any false here, it's going to give us false. Okay. So another way of determining it, for example, is copy, pass, zero and one, zero and one. So it's giving us true. Yes. Now, if I put it all, it's going to give me false because there are zeros. There shouldn't be any zeros in order this all give me true. So here it is. It's giving me true. See, that's it for today. In this tutorial, we talked about special types of arrays like eyes, identity, full, and uh, ones, and zeros, and etc. So in the next future tutorials, we're going to be also going into details of other interesting functions that NumPy shares with us. Thank you for watching. See you on the next tutorial. Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about string operations in NumPy. One of the unique operations or the functions that NumPy offers is related to strings. In this section, we're going to be dealing with how to add, subtract, split, or capitalize strings in an array. So let's get started first by importing of NumPy. Yes, np. So np.char.add. And again, we're going to be giving two arrays. The first array is here. So it should be string. Hello. Then second parameter. It should be again string. I'm going to be in world. world. If I do it, hello world. It is in one array. If I remove the space here, it's going to be making it one string. So now let's get a little bit complicated. Copy it. Pass. Remove this one. And now I'm going to be using more than two parameters. 
hello then second element in the same array in the second parameter there are also two elements a b c and x y z so you see hello hello a b c and hi x y z it's concatenating or adding two correlated elements from each parameter okay now we can also move to other function which is multiplication print mp.char.multiply the first parameter is string and the second parameter is how many times you want to multiply that string maybe three times you see there are three times uh, hello or oh, otherwise if i put here space then you see you can easily spot it and there are three hellos here now there is another function which is print np dot char center char don't forget char because char is the main part okay center the first thing that i'm gonna be giving here is hello then the second one is how many characters it should have 20 fill char is let's say asterisk so if i say you see it's filling other characters with asterisk and putting the hello in the center of it there is another function which is called capitalized so again i'm going to be using it np dot char dot capitalize capitalize what so maybe hello world so you see it's capitalizing the first letter of the first word and uh, similar to this capitalize there is another function but it is called title so you can also capitalize it however it is going to be capitalizing each first letter of each word so here even world w is also capitalized and the h also capitalized so each word's first letter will be capitalized in title however here only first words letter we can also lower instead of capitalizing it print np dot r dot lower so lowering what low world you see it's just lowering the word or the letters of a word so again there is another cool function that numpy offers us for dealing with strings print np dot character dot join first parameter is the thing that you want to join your word and the second one is actual string for example if you want to separate this day month year by these characters then you can first put the character what you want to separate this string by let's see it you see it's separating this string by this character and uh, lastly, I'm going to be showing one of the, again, cool functions that NumPy has got for string replace. So this is a replace function. For example, he is a good boy. This is an actual string. And now the second parameter is what we're going to be replacing. And now I'm going to be replacing this is with what? This, for example, was he was. I want to make this string he was a good boy instead of he is a good boy. So you see, he was a good boy. So first you're gonna be giving actual string, and the uh, and second one is the word that you want to change and the actual word that you want to put instead. So I think we have done most of the functions that NumPy offers us to deal with string. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next tutorial. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about statistical functions that NumPy has got. There are several functions and the statistics as you know is very demanding in data related jobs. So there are some functions that NumPy has got that we can use specifically for statistics. First of all, it is median, commonly and mean standard deviation, variance, percentile, average, peak-to-peak, -peak, and etc. 
here the problem in this tutorial is that I'm not going to be explaining you what is median, what is mean, what is standard deviation, and etc. I'm just going to be giving you how these functions, how these statistical functions are going to be working with NumPy functions. So first of all, let's get started by importing NumPy. And then let's open a typical NumPy array. First one is 3, 7, maybe 5, 10, open 8, 4, 3, then 2, 4, 9. Then here is our array. Then let's use simple function for statistics. The first parameter that we're going to be accepting here is the NumPy array. And then if you want, you can also specify the axis. The first one is 3. Why 3? It is giving us the minimum number from the column. The first one is here. The minimum is 3 here. And again, the minimum here is 3. Lastly, the third row, the minimum is 2. So NP again. Or maybe let's change the row into columns. So here in the first column, it is 2. In the second column, it is 4. And the third column, the minimum is 3. So then we have again the opposite of this function, which is maximum. Again, the same parameter. And if you want, you can specify the axis. And here is it. And this is also 7, which is maximum here. And the 8 is the maximum. 9 is the maximum. Maybe we can also change the, again the axis. So here it is 8 in the first column and the second, third column, maximums, etc. Then we have percentile, or in other words, uh, the range, minimum subtracted from maximum. So again, don't forget, here is our example. Let's continue with it. And then maybe again print it, print A. So now I'm going to be applying percentile, PTP. Here again, the same parameters, A. And the axis is maybe zero. You see, it is giving us three and six. So what it is doing is that it is getting these columns and subtracting the maximum minus minimum. So eight minus two is six. Seven minus four is three. Nine minus three is six again. If we change it into rows, it's going to give us another range. So seven minus three. 4, 8 minus 3, 5, 9 minus 2 is 7. So then we have another similar type of percentiles. However, you can specify the percentiles like 50%, 70%, 75%, 25%, 25%, and etc. So again, we're going to be using this of a traditional array and the print A. Then I'm going to be applying that percentile percentile and our array first parameter and the next one is the how many percentiles 50 percentile and the axis is maybe zero let's say so here it is it is giving us three four five so it is giving us the percentile from this row based and uh, the 50 percentile is three and uh, here 50 percentile is four and the 50 percentile is this one it is kind of a middle number. If you want, you can also change it into 75. Okay, you see, it's giving us 75th percentile. So it is cool and useful function if you want to apply statistics. And one of the common functions that you may ask me again is median and mean. So let's take it again. Print a np dot mean. So the first parameter is again the same and the axis is zero. So you see, it is giving us the mean of each row. So it is calculating it and giving us the mean of these rows. And then there is also median. So if I apply np.median, a axis is equal to zero, then again, it's giving us the median of it. So we can also change the axes to rows and columns. And as we go deeper, there are lots of lots of other functions. Like again, we can also use instead of mean, we can also use uh, np.average, average a5. 
axis is equal to zero. Let's see. You see, it's it's the same. If you don't specify, it's gonna give us only the average of all the elements. You see, if you don't specify your key, it's giving us the total average. Then, as you go deeper, you can come across the weighted average, etc., etc. You can also find that kind of functions. And uh, again, there is another function which is standard deviation, as you know, STD. It is called. Let's just give simple array here instead of giving our complicated one so if we give it is going to be calculating standard deviation and giving us the answer and there is another one which is variance it is war variance and uh, let's again give same simple array so it is going to give us 2.25 it is going to be calculating this variance and if you have manually calculated it you definitely know what is the inside the function of this war numpy function written. Yeah? So that's the most common statistical functions that you are going to be using constantly. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and thank you for watching. See you on the next tutorials. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about numpy's random function. So let's get started with importing it. Import numpy. S and B. So now I'm gonna be rating numpy random numpy dot random dot rand int so and hundred. So it is gonna be give oh sorry random. Now if I call the x, it's gonna be giving me random number between zero and hundred. So you see, this is the starting point. This is the stopping point okay so it's going to be giving me random number between these two numbers it should be integer because here rand int and we can also get deeper into this rand int by giving the size of it for example if i put five and call it you see there are five elements in an array that is randomly given to us between zero and hundred and even we can also get deeper into it by adding gain the shape of it for example three and five so this is the shape of the array and here it is there are three times five fifteen elements in this array so there are three arrays inside the array and inside these three arrays there are five elements each now we can also move into another function which is x is equal to numpy dot random dot rand if we run it and call it it's gonna give us this number what does it mean is that this rand is giving us a random number between 0 and 1 which is kind of probability then we can also move deeper into this one by giving some parameters to it so for example if i give 5 it gives me 5 elements between 0 and 1 i can also again add another parameter for example again 3 and 5 so let's look at and again the shape of it is getting increased as i give more and more parameters so you see it's getting three dimensional as i give more parameters we have another function which is random.choice so x is equal to np.random.choice 3 5 7 and 9 okay so it took 7 what it is doing is that it's getting one of these elements selecting it and giving us randomly totally randomly so now we can also go deeper into it by giving other parameters to it size for example size is equal to three again five you see it's giving us randomly so first it took seven second it took nine again seven again seven it is randomly taking each element there is another function which is shuffle and a is equal to np array four five let's see and first of all i think i need to import above if you press escape plus a it's gonna be opening this kind of line above it or if you press escape plus B, it's gonna be opening this kind of shell below. So I need to import random, random, which would be easier, yeah? Oh, 
random numpy from oh from it should be from now I can use random itself so random dot shuffle shuffle a and if I run it it works and if I call the run you see it's giving us shuffle form of this array and there is also permutation you can also use instead of this shuffle per how it was permutation yes permutation uh, yeah so it is also again working there are lots of lots of interesting functions that numpy's random function offers to us these are the one of the main functions that you need to be familiar with so that's it for today thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed my tutorial see you on the next tutorials hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about numpy's matlib function which deals with matrix so there are several functions like matlib.0s matlib.1s matlib.identity matlib.rand and etc and i'm going to be going into details of each of these functions so first of all i'm going to be starting this course with importing numpy and then i'm going to be opening numpy matlib function and specifically empty and in this one i'm going to be giving parameters so the parameter it's going to be getting for the time being is shape so you can see there are random numbers here and two by two shape so now there is another function which is matlib.zeros so mp.matlib.zeros so in these zeros, you can also again give the shape. So you see, all of these arrays consist of zero elements. So then we can also do ones. As we saw in previous tutorials, there are zeros, ones, and etc. And it is similar to that one. However, we are using that function through Matlib. So here it is. And there is also i function, matlib.i. So in I, we have several functions. For example, you can put dimensions and two, K, then M is equal to four, then K, I think zero, starting from zero, there will be data type is float, let's say, yeah. This is complete parameters of this one. So you see, if I change these two into four, there are four inner arrays inside this big array. So there are four elements in each array. For example, if I make this one seven, the elements increase it. Then the starting point of ones. So from which one you want, you see, the third one. And there is also identity similar to this i, for example, np.matlib.identity. Let's say just five, you see, five elements, five rows, and etc. So there is also a random function in Matlib. The advantage, for example, you may ask me why we don't just use mp.identity instead of matlib.identity. Because this Matlib is specifically for matrix. There are some functions that does not just exist in NumPy. So you need to go through Matlib. Because of this, this Matlib function has been created so that you can use them. Okay, so let's say, for example, 3 by 3. It's giving us matrix of 3 by 3. You see here it is saying matrix, not array. So this is also one of the differences between typical NumPy random function and the Matlib function. So there is also there is matrix function. So you can also use it. 1, 2, 3 and four so you see it's giving us this one this means say, there is one array and the other one is here so this is the technique how you can do it then we have s array for example there is another one which is s array s array maybe we need to assign here x is equal to and let's give x it's again making it array instead of matrix this one was matrix and this one is becoming array so look at this this one is saying matrix this one is saying array this is the difference you know now we can also make this array again matrix how do we do numpy dot as matrix as matrix 
so as matrix and we're gonna be signing here y okay so y i'm gonna be using y see again we converted this array into matrix as previously okay this is the difference and this is what you can use for that's it for today with matrices and there are lots of other functions that we need to go over however time is limited the only thing that you can learn all the things is by applying this into job into practice 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 and you're gonna be doing well so that's it thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed my tutorial on matrix numpy and see you on the next tutorial hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about sorting arrays so one of the cool functions that numpy has got that we can use is sorting arrays let's first import numpy and then seed numpy as np and then let's create a simple numpy array dot array so one oh i need to write it in an ordered way so that we can identify whether or not it has been sorted. The parameter that this sort function only gets is array. So as you can see, this is sorted array, unlike this one as we have written above. And now we can also interestingly apply this sort function in strings. For example, let's copy this one and put it here. Instead of these numbers, I'm going to be using strings. Banana maybe cherry then apple so if i apply it's gonna be sorting these strings letter by letter okay and it is typical sorting again we can also apply this sort function into true false for example true false then again true so if i apply it it's gonna be first printing false and then truths because here the false was in the middle, but here it is in the first. And the reason why false is coming first is that false is equal with zero and the true is equal to one. As you know, naturally zero comes first and one comes next. So false equaling to zero is coming first and true equaling to one coming next. So this is the aim, okay? So then we can also go into deeper by applying this sort function into multi-dimensional array. For example, if I say for 3, 12, 56, then 23 and etc. And then just examples, okay, just samples. So then I'm going to be applying np.sort a. You see, now it has sorted our array. It is entering to each array and getting the elements and sorting it and giving us the result so that's it this function is one of the most useful functions if you want to sort your array or the data so i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and thank you so much for watching see you on the next tutorial hello everybody in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about searching so we're going to be applying search function of numpy into array so first of all, we're going to be starting with again, typically by importing numpy as np. Then let's create a typical numpy array. One, two, three, four, five, maybe again four. So then we need to search mp.vea a is equal to four. And now if I print x, you see? It's giving us the position. This is not the place, for example. It's not this three. This three indicates the position of fours that are located in this array. Here is the four, which is located in the third index and fifth index and sixth index. So this is giving us the positions of these fours in the array. So then we can also use this way in similar, but a little bit different way. So let's say, for example, if we want to know the, I need to change this one into zero. So if you want to know the odd numbers, but actually this one should be even, yeah. Okay, anyway, this is giving us odd numbers. Whenever you've divided and it's equal to zero, there is no remainder, then it is odd. <laughs> it's opposite. I'm not sure, but 
if you put one, it's now I think it should give yeah, it should give us uh, even numbers. There is again another function which is search sort, and I'm gonna be making array which is np array. So six maybe six seven eight nine let's say and again x is equal to np dot search sorted search sorted and the first parameter is array name and then what do you want to search for you want to search for seven and x it is in the first index so zeros and the first index and uh, if you want you can also add another parameter which is from which side you want to start the indexing so it is in the second why because it is starting from the right position zeros first and second you see it is giving us the index and now if you want you can also get very complicated for example again instead of here i'm going to be erasing it all of them instead of this seven you can just use for example two four and the six maybe if you do it it is gonna give us zero positions because here it is this is the position only we can find the element here if it has shows us the, all the indexes so this is how you can search for any typical element or elements from big arrays okay that's it for searching in an array with numpy and i hope you enjoyed my tutorial thank you so much for watching and see you on the next tutorials hello everybody in this tutorial i'm gonna be talking about how to split array let's get started by first importing numpy import numpy then i'm gonna be creating typical array okay p dot array one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, yeah. Apply new is equal to np dot array split. So this is the function that you can split array into n number of arrays, okay? So I'm splitting this array into three. The first parameter is taking the array. And the second parameter is taking how many arrays you want to divide this original array. Then print, for example, new. So there are three separate arrays, as you can see. And now, if I want, I can also take the first array. If I want, I can also call all of these three arrays separately. It is, it is calling all of these three arrays separately. So then we can also divide this one into four. For example, changing it into four. So it is changing it here it is because we have changed it into four. Now I want to get a little bit complicated with this array. So I want to make more dimensional array. Maybe two dimensional array. Seven, eight, nine. So then let's again apply that parameter. Okay. Maybe three. So print new. So you see there are three arrays. So let's call the first one. This is the first array. And then we can also use access. Let's say access is equal to one. As you can see, this is the zeros array that we have split it into three. And we are also applying the axis. If I don't specify the array, you see this looks like as following. So there is another function which is similar to this example. However, it is a little bit different because it is the edge split and it means horizontal splitting. And I want to increase the arrays. Let's change this one. Be careful because this array may not correlate with this horizontal splitting. If you do this, you see it is giving us error. So because of this, be careful while splitting and calculate it. NP dot array. So one, two, three, then four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, zero, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Lastly, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So all. Oh. No, 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 no. 
Ah, this one it should be. Copy this one. Pass here. So we have here three. Yes. So if we apply, it is almost the same again here as we did here previously. However, the difference is here horizontal split. So if you want to split it horizontally or axis one, then you can just use edge split without specifying the axis here instead of array split. Okay. So this is the main difference here, and this is how you can split the array. Okay, just array split and specify how many areas you want to split into. And then there is another edge horizontal splitting and the vertical splitting. If you do vertical splitting, you can also do that kind of splitting, you see. And now if I specify which array, you see, it's splitting vertically. So V, H, and this all mean vertical horizontal. So that's it for today. And I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on splitting areas. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next tutorial. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to join two arrays using NumPy. So first of all, let's get started with importing NumPy. Then create an array one is equal to NumPy dot array one, two, three, a two is equal to mp dot array four five six and now i'm going to be using array np dot concatenate the parameters are two arrays a1 and a2 and now i'm going to be calling this array you see these two separate arrays are concatenated by using concatenate function so now I can also go deeper into this function by giving more parameters. For example, copy and pass and increase the dimension. For example, just say two, three, four. And then seven, eight. And now I can give parameter to it. Another parameter, which is axis. So if I give and call it, you see, it is in another type. So it didn't only concatenate into one array, but it concatenates it into two arrays in this project. One, two, five, six, and three, four, seven, eight. You see, it's doing it in column based. I can also do it in row based, like in this way. It's giving us in different way. There is another function which is called numpy.vstack or stack in general. So you can also use it. For example, if I take again this array and array is equal to mp.stack a1 and a2. So I can also specify the axis is equal to zero. So now call it. And now I can also do it in vertical version. So you see, again, the same thing. However, we can also use this stack without access. This one, I can just delete it and I can put here horizontal if I want zero or one. So you see, again, the same thing. This is horizontal. So it is, and instead of one, I can put here V vertical one. So you see, we can just specify horizontal, vertical, and etc. We can also do D diagonal. The same thing here, axis one is equal to D. So this is how you can join or concatenate two or more arrays using NumPy. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next tutorials. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking how to create a file and saving data using NumPy. So let's get started with importing NumPy. NP. And now I'm going to be creating a typical NumPy array. So array, let's say one, two, three, four, and five. Then I'm going to be saving this data in particular file. So let's say the name of the first parameter is the name of the text file let's say out file and then the second parameter is the data that we want to save into this file 
So now we have saved our array in this file. The name of file is out file. So let's now open it. mp.load. So there is load function in NumPy. And now I'm going to be opening it. Out file dot npy. Then I'm going to be printing b. So here we have saved the data inside this out file into b and we are printing that b now. You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I change this one up to, for example, 6 and 7, rerun it, then again rerun it, you see, again up to 7. Because we have saved this data array into this out file and now we are assigning it into b, then opening b here. So if you want to know more about this data where this file have been saved, it's saved here. I think it should be here. Yes, here it is. If I open it, so you see, it is this one. But we cannot see it now. And that's it. And then there is another function. You can also save your data into text file. For example, if I again create this one, let's copy and paste and now i again save that data into text file txt there is again another function which is called mp.savetxt and then the name of the file first again out for example dot txt in this naming rule you need to put the extension format of the file so then the next one is as usual the file itself or the data itself so I have saved it and now I'm going to be opening b is equal to mp.load txt again out.txt at the end I'm going to be printing b so you see again the same thing if I print to print it you see it's again the same thing however again I'm going to be looking at this one you see we have created new out txt if I open it, you see, you can see it here. You can read the data because this is text file, not the MPY file, you see, MPY here. So this is the procedure of how you can save your data into particular formatted file, okay? So you see, there are two types of saving your data into files. And these are the most common saving procedures that you need to know if you want to learn NumPy. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on how to save your data using NumPy and see you on the next tutorials. Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking how to use NumPy areas in data visualization with Matplotlib. So I'm going to be using NumPy to Matplotlib visualization. In order to do this, we need to import NumPy and Matplotlib libraries. And if you are using Jupyter Notebook or Colab, you don't need to install that libraries. However, if you are using IDEs like PyCharm, you definitely need to install these libraries. With that saying, let's get started by importing both of them. Import NumPy as NP and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so the shortcut for matplotlib pyplot is plt then we can use the coordinate systems like np.arrange 1 to 11 then y is equal to let's say 2 times x plus 5 this is the formula and then we have plt dot title so the title of this graph let's say mat dot lib demo then plt dot x level so name of the x coordinate x axis let's say then plt dot y label y axis then we have plot itself plt dot plot x first one is x and the second parameter is y then at the end plt dot show so it is loading, you see, this is the title of our graph, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis name, and this is the range, you see, and this is the formula that we give, so it is cool, isn't it? 
this kind of graphs are necessary in data science data related jobs because through visualization we can make conclusions predictions because seeing data for example one two three doesn't mean anything but if you see in graphs you can visualize it and then make predictions or make conclusions better you can also change the label not just one line i can also do it okay for example you see this is dots and etc you can go into details of matplotlib but this is not a course for matplotlib i am going to be just paying attention to this numpy usage so let's move to other numpy usage here okay so np dot range again zero to three times mp dot pi and zero point one so now y is equal to mp dot sign so i'm going to be drawing trigonometric functions so plt dot title is um, let's say sine v let's plot it plt dot plot x and y then plt dot show you see this is sine wave and you can do lots of lots of things using numpy and uh, matplotlib this is just a demonstration of how you can use NumPy with other libraries in data science. Data science starts with NumPy. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. By the way, if you want to know more in depth about the Matplotlib library, then you can go to the link below I put. So bye bye.